Hey everyone, Hydrahead here, and this is Frank Miller's Xerxes. This is the second part. Uh, I know I said I wasn't going to buy it, but I had to go ahead and give part two a shot, see if it improved at all. <coughs> this came out a while ago. Um, I actually think three is already out and four is on its way. I just now got around to reading it because I really wasn't excited for it in the least. And unfortunately, my feelings really haven't changed. Um, I will say the... Um, the writing felt better, but it still felt like he was just ripping himself off with 300. The uh, pacing of the narration is like identical to 300 and how the narrator narrated that story. The uh, art is just <laughs> atrocious. Um, so like Ronan is one of my favorite Frank Miller stories and the art in that is unique. And you can say the same about this, except unique in a very bad way. And our main guys that we're following, they're Athenian. But they're drawn very, very, very similar to the Persians, which kind of annoys me. Um, <clears throat> oh, that's a frog. And I do like some of the, the background styling he chose on the art. It kind of... I think what he was going for is that classic Greek... Um, like before the Renaissance style art where everything was very kind of sketchy but you could still tell what it was um, and if he was then yeah he, he nailed that I just it's hard to look at and I don't want to pay money for it especially when you're paying $4.99 for Frank Miller and it's <laughs> fucking rubbish and like look at this this owl that is the most awkward yeah. Just, yeah. And then this nice overhead shot of the city with our awkward owl and just not pleased in the slightest with his art. Some of the writing is funny though, like the narration and stuff like that. Um, generally, genuinely made me laugh. This dude here uh, came running up with a message and then just died right in front of this dick-nosed uh, Druish chap. <laughs> Um, a lot of the men have a very feminine look to them, which is kind of annoying. Like, this is our general. Um, and he is actually a man, even though they very much look like a woman, which I guess is probably just because of the excessive eyeliner. And then, like, right here. This guy is part of the Persians, or part of the Athenians. But he looks Persian. These guys all look Persian. These are the Persians. I mean... There's not much difference between them, Frank. I at least choose a skin color for one so that I can differentiate in some way, shape, or form. Uh, basically what happens in this fight, though, is our Athenians return home. Oh, what a... St oh, sorry. Um, our Athenians return home. Some of them. Most of them were devastated by battle. The Persians show up. Um, they basically arm everybody in the village and... To make it look like there's a huge full-blown army here and then they um i'm sorry that was disgusting <coughs> and then when the persians do show up they basically rain fire greek fire down on them uh and they have one of their men basically go in on a secret mission and kill the head of the persians he does that right in front of xerxes um and his father tells him that you cannot, no mortal man can defeat the, uh, the Romans on their own soil. And then Xerxes leaves. And <clears throat> we find out that this is actually all just a big prequel to 300. And this is basically the um, story of how Xerxes became the immortal god. God king. <laughs> I'll just go ahead and skip through all this boring battle. Oh yeah, there's a spot with a whole bunch of naked women. And, uh... The women will repeat nothing. That will repeat nothing that they hear. They have no tongues. Well, okay. Um, I realize there's lots of other fun parts of a woman, but um, you're losing out by taking their tongues. Albeit, you don't have to hear them talk, but you're losing out on a lot of other things, friend. After that's all done and said with, though, we rejoin Xerxes out in the desert, and this is where we find out that, yeah, this is basically the birth of the god king. And uh, next issue, we probably find out exactly how that all came about. And that would be in The Fall of House of Darius and the Rise of Alexander. 
Look at this art. It's just bleh. I really wish Frank had actually tried on this. So again, I don't recommend this still. Um, I think some die-hard Frank Miller fans might enjoy it, maybe, but I would at least pick up the first issue, see if you like it, uh, or just wait until the trade comes out or you can read them all digitally. Because um, this book has been nothing but disappointment as far as I'm concerned, and it's pretty boring. And it really doesn't give me high hopes for the uh, the drivel that Frank and, and the PC crew is going to be pumping out for DC's ulterior brand. But anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Hell Hydra, baby.